sure that goes in there. It feels like it did. Welcome to TriStar Digging. Appreciate you joining us today. And also welcome to spring of 2023. It was a balmy 19 degrees this morning when I got in the truck. Man, it was cold. Skid steer spit and sputter there getting started. And I don't blame it because I was spitting and sputtering trying to get started this morning as well. We are on a project this morning that uh, the property is going to be familiar to some of the regular viewers on the channel. It's a property where I did uh, quite a bit of land clearing. And probably a few videos ago, maybe four or five videos ago, I did the uh, pad for the home. Uh, but today, our project is going to be take this uh, Cat 259D skid steer and the trencher that I've got on that. And uh, we're going to put in a water line. I'm going to draw a little diagram here in just a minute, kind of give you an idea of what it looks like on paper. So it's a little bit more understandable than me just pointing my finger and, and uh, talking about it. But anyway, the meter is up there, those bushes of trees. We gotta go all the way down to the, where the house is, across where the driveway's gonna be, and we're gonna plumb in that mobile home there and put in the uh, main service to the house. And we're also gonna put in two frost-proof water spigots. So uh, stick around, there's no telling what's gonna happen today. Because when it comes to plumbing, uh, there's always surprises for me when it's plumbing. And got the skid steer warming up there. We'll get it off the trailer in just a minute. And also, I'm gonna try something different today. I've got a, what's called a spinning Jenny sitting there. And that's originally designed for unspooling high tensile wire. Uh, but I'm gonna adapt that today to see if I can unspool this uh, PEX pipe with it. If you've never unspooled PEX pipe, especially a 500 foot roll, which I'm hoping to get a 500 foot row instead of 300 foot rows. It's a chore, especially when it's cold. So I'm hoping that's gonna work for me today. And we'll see how that works. Skid steers warming up. We'll take a look up here. Uh, called the utility locate last week, and they came out and marked the utilities that are here. So you see this uh, orange line right here that indicates the uh, communications line, phone lines, whatever. So it is way up here above the meter, which is fantastic. And they marked the uh, water line coming across the road into this meter. So from this meter on, it's our responsibility. And uh, there's the yellow poles. On both sides of the rows, those indicate gas line. And there's no yellow markings through here. So I can confidently say that uh, there's a crossing right there. Maybe it comes up this way and goes across or whatever. But definitely the uh, line goes underneath the road right there from one yellow pole to the other. But no gas line markings in our area, which is fantastic. I've already been in this meter last week and uh, let's pop it off to take a look. So my challenge this morning I've got to make sure I can find a fitting to hook up to that water meter where I can hook my pecs into it. And uh, I'm sure I can find that. Maybe you have to go to, the, to a specialty plumbing store to get that, that particular fitting. But anyway, we, uh, we will find that. As I mentioned there a minute ago, I 
I did a drawing kind of give you an idea of what we're doing and this little old green junkie marker that's the only thing in my truck I could find a right with so uh, this is the best we got for today but anyway up here's the road uh, where I came in on I'm parked right now right here the water meters right here the property line here property lines over here so coming down here to the uh, mobile home where it's setting this dotted line represents the water line I'm gonna dig coming down to here coming across where the driveway is going to be I'm gonna run a T right here over to here where there's gonna be a water spigot and then I'm gonna continue on over to here the main line coming into the house is here we'll make that main line connection put in a T and continue the line down to the end of the mobile home and put in another frost proof water spigot right there so that gives you an idea of my plan for this and you know what plans are they're just something to start with <laughs> always subject to change i was fixing to get started there and uh to meet it all not only are my hands freezing off but it appears that the pins that hold my bucket on are froze so uh and now then so let's work on that for just a minute and then on top of that when i started whacking it over just a minute ago the handle come off my hammer But that's all right, I've got another hammer. Let's squirt these down with some juice here and see if we can get them free up. That one is. Now then, got those freed up. That bucket is locked in place. We are good to go. I guess I better put this one in the machine for now because I broke the other one. First thing we want to do is get over here and uh, we got a bunch of little old trees and junk in the way, brush. I got to get that stuff out of the way and then uh, we can start putting that line in. Well, that tree don't want to come out of the ground. most of the stump in the ground that's fantastic wow that didn't take long now i got a clear path all the way to my meter and the next thing i want to do is get that dug out around uh, that pipe coming out of that meter because i'm actually going to cut the, i've been in before it actually comes out in curves and goes this way because there used to be a mobile home setting just to the right side of my truck on the other side of the power line. But it's an old copper line and uh, I'm gonna dig that out and swing that back around. I'm actually gonna cut that off and loosen that nut, take that nut and that pipe with me to make sure I get the right fitting for that. While I'm digging this out, I've got a question. For the regular viewers of the channel, does anybody remember where? <laughs> does anybody remember where I left the tripod? I don't know where that thing's at. I left it on a job somewhere. I do not have a metal blade in there. I'm gonna go get one. Okay, I made it back now. With a uh, metal cutting blade, and we get that cut right off with.
You know, and while I was working on that, I have a new idea what I'm gonna do. Some utility companies in our area require the uh, property owner to put a shutoff on the outside of their meter. This uh, company, as far as I know, hasn't told the homeowner that. While I'm in here, that would be really easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off back here. I'm gonna get a shark bite shut off right here that I can go from three quarter inch copper shut off valve to three quarter inch PEX pipe coming out the other side. And then I'm gonna get a utility box that has an open top with a lid on it to where they can access that shut off without getting into the water company's water meter there. So that'll work good. That way I don't have to spend too much time trying to find the right fitting or adapter for that meter. And they'll have a shut off valve which will work great. Let's get to it. Well, it was pretty cold this morning, but it don't take long to warm up using this manual backhoe. Oh, I don't like it, manual backhoe. Now then, got, not, got that cut off straight. I'll deburr that to where I can put my shark bite on there. Got this cleaned out now where I can put a box in there. Next step is get this bucket off, get the trencher on, and let's dig a line. What I'm gonna do now is get in the machine and uh, run this through some function forwards and backwards and uh, make sure the motor and everything's gonna work. I don't have any leaks. A couple things on this uh, trencher that I really like. One thing is these rock teeth. The guy that I bought it from had these rock teeth put on it so that they'll kind of bust up rocks rather than just having these cutter teeth on it. Uh, works really well. The other thing, and you'll see this in just a minute, is it has a hydraulic slide, which I'll show you this lever in just a second. But when I pull that lever around, the hydraulics on the machine will move this uh, trencher digger over uh, to the right and to the left, all the way to the edge on that side, but in about three quarters over on this way. But that lever's right here, and uh, when I get out in just a minute, you'll see me come out and flip this around and you'll see that hopefully you'll see that move over I haven't moved it in a while That's looking pretty good. I didn't see any leaks. Now I'll get out and move that lever over and we'll see if it's gonna slide for us. No leaks, that's a good thing. Moment of truth, let's see if this baby's gonna slide over. Oh yeah. That is working great. That chain could stand to be uh, tightened up just a little bit and uh, it works just like a dozer track or a skid steer track, excavator track, whatever. It's got a grease fitting right in there and you pump the grease in that and it extends this bar out and tightens the chain. There we go. A little bit froze up, but if you see this chain, when I pump that, it raises that bottom up tension and putting tension on it. That ought to be fine. Let's see if we can dig a trench now. I'm gonna dig this about 18 to 20 inches deep. Our frost line here is not very deep. It's shallow. We don't get a lot of freezing days consecutively. So about 18, 20 inches is fine here.
got that dug out now from the where the main goes into the house and i come out to there and i've got to go out towards the end of the mower home to put that spigot in out there and then i got to come back this way all the way down where i've uh, got that other dug down to the end of the mobile home Got that one dug out now down here to the back and then I uh, come right here to where I can make a turn with that pex and put that spigot right there at the corner of the house. Now then let's go the other way. Dug in now, we'll take a look at the back of the house and walk our way along the side of the house and then uh, look back up towards the meter. So I dug the line all the way down beside the house there and then uh, took a cross cut right here so I can get the uh, faucet over here next to the corner of the house. And then I dug this plenty deep because she wanted to make sure it was deep enough that she wouldn't get into it planting any bushes or trees or anything like that. The mobile home company wanted me to be two feet off the house i'm probably more like three i'll have to measure it good and clean now down through there and then i did this cross section here to get that spigot over there and then i did the same thing over here in this corner did a little cross cut right there to get it right there close to the house back over here i kind of curved it around to get my trench back up to the water meter there i got a mess to clean out right here where, I, where my two ditches cross i've got to dig that out but this cross section right here is clean. And then it goes all the way up to the meter. I did, you did see a curve in it up there because I wanted to curve around that tree. That's a nice tree. And I didn't really want to take that out just to put that water line in. So I just curved around it. For the homeowner and uh, for the other guys who are gonna be here working, doing things here in a few minutes, I'm gonna take measurements off the front corner, the middle and the back corner to let them know exactly where that water line is and how deep it is. But I'll get that done here in a minute, done with this machine. I'm gonna take it back up to the truck and uh, do some more measurements and run and get some parts and some pipe and we'll get this in the ground. Got all the digging took care of now and I uh, made a quick trip to Lowe's and I didn't have a 500 foot roll of PEX, which is unfortunate. That means I'm gonna have to have at least one connection in my main line running to the, the mobile home, which I didn't want. But anyway, I had to get two 300 foot uh, sections of uh, PEX, got that. Got some insulation, a pipe to uh, give a good good base for the frostproof uh, faucets to attach to, pressure reducer, a bunch of uh, fittings, and got a box for our valve up near the meter. It's about one o'clock. I'm hoping to get this done in a few hours and uh, get this all done in one day. So we'll see what happens. Get the burrs knocked off this copper pipe and then we'll be able to slide that shark bite ball valve on there. That's good and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and put this shutoff valve on there. And I'm gonna test that very first thing. See if that's gonna leak. Let's find out if I get a bath or uh, it's gonna work. Voila, no leak. Good, first fitting works. Show you how this spinning jenny works. I've got now that I've got wires uh, around this wire to keep it from getting away. If you ever un let a uh, roll of high tensile wire get away from you, that thing will unspool and it looks a mess. And what you do is you just turn these ears to the inside like this. And I may have to loosen that one, nope. It'll turn. And then you just simply uh, take the roll of wire off of it, just like that. Easy enough. And then we are going to put this uh, 
get the plastic off of this PEX and then we'll put it on there. Ideally, you would want these things to uh, come over the top of that and hold that on there, but that's not going to be uh, happening for us. What I'm going to do is put them, bump them up as high as I can. There's wing nuts on the bottom, I'm going to tighten those. And then we'll see if this thing's going to unspool the way that I want it to. Okay, no better time than now to see if this is going to work. It's actually working a little better than I thought it was once I got started. But it needs a little bit of modification to get those ears to come up over the top of the row and it would work flawlessly because we're kind of getting bunched up in there. But that seems to be working pretty good. It's a whole lot better than the, the other way, trying to unroll it by hand. Let's see if we can keep her going. Oh yeah. Well, until it unspooled on the top. All right, proof of concept, it will work. It's just gonna take some, uh, some working on this spinning jenny to get those ears to lap across top of it. All right, here we go the old fashioned hard way. Oh man, what a mess, what a mess, what a mess. I'm gonna fight this thing for two or three hours and then uh, I'll be back when I get straightened out. Okay, well there was absolutely nothing pretty about what just happened here. But anyway, I got the uh, box here in place. I got the valve hooked up and the uh, PEX pipe connected to the shark bite, shark bite connected to the copper pipe. <laughs> So that rhymed, didn't it? Uh, so well, that's hooked up. Now then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this PEX pipe pushed down in this ditch right here, get some dirt on it, get it packed in, and then maybe I can finish fighting with this pipe to get it unspooled and stretched out. So here we go. Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed doing it. Woo! I'm starting to remember now why I don't do the plumbing part of it. <laughs> but I'll get her done. Let me get this pipe in the ground, get it covered up, and uh, we'll go down to where that connection's at and we'll start again. Got that water line in and got it buried, and now then we're going to make this connection between these two pieces of PEX. And I bought this tool today. I've been wanting to get one of these for a pretty good while. Just give you an idea how the way this works. This piece, this I'm gonna use this T for instance. That T will slide in that piece of PEX and this crimp will go over that PEX like that. And then this tool, the crimper, will put that crimp inside just like that. And then when you get ready to crimp it, you just push these two blade handles together and it crimps that pex onto that fitting or it won't leak or it won't slip and as i mentioned i've been wanting to get one of these for a while this I actually bought a good one because this one has interchangeable dies this one is for a three quarter inch pipe and i also have a three eighths inch and i have a half inch 
dies for that. And then if you don't, if you don't leave, put the dies in there, it'll, it'll cramp a one inch piece. So I've been wanting to get one of these for a while and just finally broke down and got one today. And a uh, pretty neat little tool. What I'm gonna do is get this blue roll of pecs out now and wanna roll that out all the way down to the house and down past the house, all the way to that last spigot where it's going in. And then uh, we'll get all that in place and then we'll come back and make all the connections we gotta make. And here we go with another one of these snakes. Golly bum, these things are aggravating. And I certainly will have that spinning Jenny working before I try to do this again. But one thing's for sure, I am not going to let this one get away from me like I did that last one. Here we go on the first crimp. And as I mentioned, put the crimp on there, on the pipe, just like that. And then this piece goes down the inside there all the way up to a, a ring that where it seats. Push the crimp back up on it not off, back up on it, right there. And then you put the crimp around it. Like that. And give her a good old crimp, just like that. And it's just that easy. We'll get the white pipe over here and do the same thing. Most important part when you're doing this second one is, when I find my crimp, there it is, is to put this on first, because if you don't do that, you put this together, you won't be able to get that crimp on there. So push it together and get it seated, just like that. Put the crimp around it. And then get it seated and a good crimp. There you go, waterproof and pull apart proof. Well, I wouldn't say completely pull apart proof. You could pull it apart if you really wanted to, I suppose. And another thing is right here is where my crimp is. I do not want to cover that up until I pressurize it and make sure that I don't have a leak right there. Now I'm gonna start putting these fittings together. And I looked for a long time at Lowe's to have a one piece connection between here and the PEX pipe. But I looked, I don't know, a long time to try to find the fitting that would work for that. And it would have been fine if I'd had one of these with a male end rather than a female end, but I could not find one. Stuff was all mixed up, stuff wasn't in the right place. Anyway, it's a nightmare trying to figure that out. What I ended up doing was getting this uh, pipe nipple and that will screw in there like that. And then this will screw on like this. And then our PEX pipe will connect to that and crimp on. That's the best I could come up with uh, dealing with the uh, frustrations of all the missing parts and everything else I was dealing with at Lowe's. But anyway, this will work. And my plan is to put some thread sealing on it and put some tape on it as well. I'll set you up here and time lapse this and we'll get this looking good and done. I got both those frost proof uh, ends put on now. So those are good, ready to be connected. And now then we'll look at the pressure reducer. And again, trying to find the right fittings, I couldn't find. I wanted to find a shutoff valve with a male end on it that would screw right into the uh, pressure reducer on the inlet side. There again, I couldn't find one. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a shark bite with a male end, and I'm just gonna simply screw that in there, put tape and uh, pipe dope on it. Then take a short piece of PEX and connect these two together like this. And then it'll actually be like this. And then uh, down here at the bottom, our PEX main line will come in there. So that'll hook up like that. 
and the top part will screw directly onto the uh, fitting that the mobile home company provided for. So that screws onto that short piece of PEX and then our mainline PEX coming in the bottom. Just like that, I'll get this tightened down and then we'll go down to the mobile home and get some of this stuff put on. This hydrant down here and we are ready to install it. I'm thinking about right in there will be just fine. So I'll cut this pipe off and get it crimped onto the bottom of the uh, water hydrant and stand it in place, see how it looks. Kind of an awkward place to try to do this, but I think I got it. Get her one more time, just to make sure. Yeah. See how it looks. And what I'm gonna do is use the skid steer to push that pipe down in the ground. Straight, preferably. The only thing that pipe's for is to fasten that uh, hydrant to it so it gives it a little bit more uh, sturdiness, I guess I should say. I think I'll cut it off about right in there. This is the factory drop right here for the house. And we're just gonna tie into, tie into it. They got a three quarter inch male fitting on it, which will go right into our pressure reducer. So we'll get some tape on it, some pipe dope, put the pressure reducer on it, and then we'll put the, the uh, shutoff valve on it. And on a pressure reducer, there is an arrow that shows which way the water's supposed to come in. So it comes in from this side and goes up and into the house. And this screw back here on the back of it increases or decreases the pressure going in the house as well. But it's preset to a certain PSI, I forget now what it is, but. And I do not want to cross thread this because it will be a pain to start. There we go. That is where I want that. Now then, let's cut ourselves a little bit of PEX. Put our shutoff valve on. Wouldn't necessarily have to have a shutoff valve right here because we've got one up at the meter box, but it'd be awful convenient to have one here, no more than it costs to put one on it right here. I'm just gonna cut a short piece. Just like that. Sometimes there's a little rough edge around where you make a cut. And I just like to take that at either a knife or this cutter. Just simply roll that little burr off. I don't know if that's necessary or not. I just feel like it goes in that sharp bite connector a little better. Put that in in. If it's gonna go eye in that one. And then we're gonna cram this one up in here. like that 
Now there's our shut off. And then we're gonna put our pipe going out to the main line on now. Not seat. <coughs> then it did. Let's we'll make sure that goes in there. That feels like it did. We'll know in a little bit when we turn the water on. There is not really a comfortable way to get in this ditch to do this, but I'm gonna take this T now. We're gonna put it in this line here. And then we're going to drop it down that ditch and tie it into that main line. Now that that connection's made, we're going to push him down there in the ground, get some dirt on the side of it, and not cover that up the connection until we test it make sure it ain't gonna leak got the main line teed in now and tied into the house uh, let me go ahead and turn that shut off valve off right there and then now what we want to do is work on this second spigot get it uh, teed in and and set up and where we saw that this morning though where we're gonna put that is on the front end of the house it's gonna go over there and then dog leg over closer to the that corner. That's gonna be the exact same process as it was down there. I'm gonna get this knocked out right quick. It's getting kind of late on me and I wanna pressure test this and hopefully it doesn't leak and then get this covered up and finished today. So let's get this done. I'll be back in a minute. All right, well, it all boils down to this. I've got everything buttoned up, got all the loose pipe covered up except for my joints. Now then, it's time to pressure test. Here goes nothing. My shut off outside the meter is off. I'm going to get the uh, wrench and open the main meter from the water source. And then we're going to gradually open this uh, one outside the meter. And then we'll head down to the very far end of the house and bleed all the air out through that last spigot down there. All right, main meter is on. crack this one right here. Well, no, we got somebody come and talk to us. I'm not sure what all that was about, but uh, apparently his daddy's buying his tires because he just burned them off. <laughs> so well, I'm not sure what that is. But this is Tim Hargrove. He come by to see us. He uh, actually got a few videos on uh, on YouTube, little homestead videos. What's the name of your YouTube video? Uh, Tim Grove three. Tim Grove three. T I M G R O V E three. So he's got most of those private, I think, but he's got a few working on his little homestead there. But he come by to see me. He's, he's actually got a pad he wants built and some footers uh, to dig for his uh, house he's putting in there. So check him out. He's got a few videos there and uh, see what he's got. Here we go. Turn this on and uh, run down there and make sure we ain't leaking. All right, we got water going downhill. Check this first uh, fitting down here where we join the 300 foot roll to the next row. And then we'll go down to the very end and start bleeding air off. There's our first connection. It looks good. There's the first T, no water. The first hydrant, no water. And the second T, no water. The shutoff valve going into the house, a little water on that. And the last hydrant, no water. So let's bleed some air out of it.
got a good flow of water there. Let's go to that other hydrant and blame the water out of it. I don't know if I'll be able to put pressure going into the house cause it's probably locked and uh, I don't want to run water in there unless I make sure everything's off in there. That takes care of the air out of that line, that little short line. Now then I'm gonna go back up to the meter and turn the uh, shutoff valve fully open and, and put all the pressure, street pressure, on the line and uh, give it a few minutes and see what it looks like. Also, I'll see if the doors are locked or if there's a key and uh, see if I can get water into the house, at least to a shutoff in there to pressurize that shutoff and uh, pressure reducer, make sure it's not leaking. Get this one turned on now. That is fully on, full pressure going into the house. And what you wanna look at is this little bitty wheel right there. Um, if there's a leak, any leak at all, that little bitty wheel is gonna be turning. And then after so many revolutions of that, it starts turning this big dial right here. And then it starts turning this uh, these numbers. But that looks really good. The little wheel is not moving at all. That is perfect. I just talked to the owner on the phone and uh, matter of fact, she's not able to go into the house yet. The uh, mobile home company uh, wants to maintain control of the house and before anybody can go into it, they won't have it totally finished before they let anybody go in. Well, they do have a plumber coming to do a final inside the house. So once the plumber gets here, basically all he'll have to do is turn the water on up at the road, turn the water on here and shut off and just check my connections right there. I know we've got uh, a seal all the way to right here. It's just from the valve up to here. I don't know about and can't test until they do that. Also, we talked about uh, just leaving this rough, roughly filled in, leaving these connection points open and uh, make sure that after a few days of pressure that uh, they're not leaking. Because I'm gonna be coming back uh, to build a driveway and uh, build a parking area and a number of different things that she just talked about that I'll be coming back to do. But that's gonna wind this video up. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stick around for the message. God bless and thanks for watching. Well, I appreciate you sticking around for the message. I got that job all finished up and man, oh man, was that a lot of work. Good night. I haven't worked that hard in a long time, especially trying to get that job finished up in one day. But it turned out good and I got it all finished up and, and overall things went well. And that being the first day of spring, man, it was cold that morning, 19 degrees, I think it was. And here it is, uh, I'm recording this message on, I guess it's the third day of spring now. And we've got a not so gentle rain <laughs> that's moved in and it is cold again. I guess it's in the high thirties, maybe low forties. And uh, it's pretty chilly. I'm actually pretty cold right now. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you sticking around for the message. And, and you saw in that video that I was struggling with that pipe, especially that white one, that PEX pipe, 300 feet row. Man, oh man, that stuff can drive you absolutely nuts, especially on a cold day like that. It doesn't want to unwind. And uh, it was just giving me a fit. And at one point there, you saw, <laughs> You saw that I was tangled up in that pipe, trying to get it untwisted and unturned and off camera there, there was a couple times that thing hit me in the head and, and man, it was just a fight with that pipe. It, 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 the way it twisted up coming off that, that spinning Jenny. But anyway, that's, that's the way that life goes. We get in situations that we get all tangled up in and uh, it's from our own doing. Uh, it's our own fault that we get tangled up in those messes and more particularly what I'm talking about is, is we get tangled up in sinful situations that we ought not be in. Just like I was fighting that Pex pipe, we fight with sin. We, we wrestle with uh, the desires, the, the fleshly desires, so to say, the human desires that we have. We struggle with those just like I was struggling with that pipe. <laughs> Sometimes we get hit in the head. And, uh, but you know, the Bible is very clear that God always provides us a way of escape from sinful situations. And it's really when we think that we're in a position that we won't fall or we think we're in a position where we can stand our own feet and we can handle and accomplish things in our own strength, that we fall. 
the Bible plain and says that pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And that's very true. So what I want to talk about today is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul talking to the Corinthian people, he was telling them about their forefathers, how that they lusted after evil things and how that uh, they had become idolaters, worshiping foreign gods other than the God of Israel and the God of the Jewish people. And that they were uh, seeking after and searching after sexual immorality and the things that was going on during then. So Paul was talking to them about those instances in the history of the Jewish people. And then he tells them in verse 12 of chapter 10, he says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Paul is saying there, don't get proud, don't get arrogant, don't think you're not going to fall or you can't fall, that you're so religious or you're so spiritual that sin just can't overtake you and that you can do whatever you want and you'll be just fine. Absolute recipe for a disaster. It's by God's strength, it's by God's power and by God's will that we're able to accomplish and do anything. And he continues on in verse 13 and says this, no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. Very plainly there in the very first part of that, Paul says, listen, everything that you're facing is common. Everybody faces these particular desires and these particular sinful situations or these obstacles that come in our life. Nothing is new is coming upon us. It's common to man, it says. But then he says and gives the assurance, he says, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able understand there. God will allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able. Doesn't say we won't face temptation. Doesn't say we won't face trials and tribulations in our life and, and frustrations in our life. We will face those things. But the word says that God is faithful. And it continues to say that he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able to stand. Now then, there's not a period there that the, the scripture goes on and tells us how that we're able to stand. And it continues by saying this, but with the temptation, with the temptation, will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So in that teaching there, what Paul's telling the people, he says that the, the temptations that come upon you are common to man, but that as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ, God will provide a way of escape. And it's important that we understand that because yes, we're going to enter into that temptation. We've got to be looking for that way of escape. We can't dabble in sin in our own strength and think, well, I'm just going to look at this one thing or I'm going to say this or I'm going to do that or I, I, I'm going to take this, this first step, but I know when to stop. I can handle it. I, I can quit anytime I want to. Satan wants you in that position. He wants me in that position. He wants me to think that I can quit anytime I want to. Sin is powerful. In a in previous uh, passage that we've talked about, talk, talks about that sin has power. And it does. It has power to destroy. So it's not, in the Bible's clear, it's not in our strength that we will accomplish that. When we face those temptations, we have to be looking for that way of escape. And take it. Take the way of escape. Don't dabble with sin. And, and then, and, and then uh, later on start looking for the way of escape. Look for that way of escape when the temptation comes. Because if we don't, we're going to fall to that sin. And it's going to be a struggle and a fight to come out of that. I know I deal with it every single day of my life. As do you. So as a Christian, I want to uh, offer you this encouragement and offer you this strength that when those temptations come, that you'll look for that way of escape. And here's a simple way for us to avoid sinful situations. If we have to debate within our own mind whether or not what we're going to do is sinful or whether we should or shouldn't do it, that is a way of escape. If we are debating that, we already know what the answer is. It's not whether or not it might be or is. Listen, if we're debating it in our own mind, we ought not do it. We should not do it. Never debate with Satan. Jesus didn't debate with Satan at, and when, the, when Jesus was facing the temptations from Satan. He said, depart from me. So that's what we ought to be doing in that situation. In our mind and in our heart when those things come into play is say, depart from me and walk away from that temptation. 
Sin will take you farther than you ever want to go, cost you far more than you ever wanted to pay, and keep you far longer than you ever wanted to stay. I hope that you're a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ today. If you're not, then you can have this hope and you can have this assurance of God's Word and the promises in His Word applied to your life if by simply trusting in Jesus Christ, you receive Him as Lord and Savior and the forgiveness of your sins. I hope this message has been encouragement to you. I hope it strengthens you in your walk with the Lord. Thanks for watching.